Hey everybody, this week's project is this HP ProBug 430G6. As you can see, this is something I bought from eBay. It's not turning on, no hard drive. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna power this on and we're gonna see what is wrong with it. Isn't it so clean? Let's take a look at it. Okay, so I've plugged in a non good HP power adapter and I just pressed the power button. And nothing happens. Try one more time. Nothing happens. Let's take out the board and have a look at it. This is what the motherboard looks like when I remove it from the laptop. So I'm going to start where I always start at the DC input jack. We're getting no signs of life at all. So the first thing I need to know is are we getting the 19.5 volts from the power adapter onto the motherboard? We don't have a schematic this time, but if we look at the DC input jack, the cable that connects to the motherboard looks like this. So as you can see, we have two red wires here, which I will presume to be our positive DC input. And we have two black wires here, which I will presume to be our ground. Now when that connects in, you can see that these two connect to these two pins right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a voltage check on these two pins with the power adapter connected. So with my 19.5 volts HP power adapter connected, I introduce my multimeter in volts DC in a 20 volt range. I place my black probe to ground. We're just using the back of the USB-C port here as our ground. And I place my red probe to my DC input pin. You can choose either of the two pins, it's fine. And when I measure there, what I find is it is varying between 1 and 1.9 volts. And just so you can all see what this looks like in the real world, I place my black probe to ground, my red probe to the input pins, and this is what it's measuring on my multimeter. So as you can see, it's varying somewhere between like 1 volt and 1.9 volts. If this laptop were fully functional, I would expect to see a stable 19.5 volts on these two input pins right here. What we're getting is a varying voltage between 1 volt and 1.9 volts. Now, I know the DC power adapter is good. I think that the DC input jack and the cable connecting it to the motherboard is good. So what I think is happening is the power adapter is detecting a fault with the motherboard and power cycling. So what I'm going to do is disconnect my power completely introduce my multimeter in diode mode I'm going to start taking some measurements on the input section and see if we can find out what is causing the fault the first diode mode measurement I want to take is at the DC input itself so this time I'm placing my red probe to ground and I'm placing my black probe to where my DC input comes in and when I measure there I find 0 0.652 so there's no short on the input jack itself so where does our DC voltage go from there? Well, as you can see, there doesn't appear to be any components around those two pins. However, if I zoom in, you can see that there are a number of vias. So what happens is our voltage comes in and goes through these vias to the other side of the board. So let's follow it across to the other side of the board. The other side of the board, I've located those vias right here. So our voltage comes through these vias and onto the pins of this MOSFET right here. I found a data sheet for this MOSFET. It's a 30 volt P channel enhancement mode power MOSFET. As you can see, we have three source pins on one side and a gate pin and four drain pins on the other side. I'll just mark those pins in here. So our DC voltage is coming onto the source pins. If the gate pin of this MOSFET is low, that permits our voltage through from our source to our drain. But right now, all I want to check is to make sure that there is no shorts on the input section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check after this MOSFET and see if we have a short there. And measuring at the drain pins of that first MOSFET, I actually get a reading of OL. Now, I don't know if that is the correct reading that I should be getting at this position, but the one thing I can say is there's certainly no short here. After our DC leaves this first input MOSFET, it travels down this track right here and onto this second input MOSFET. The second MOSFET is also a 30 volt P-channel MOSFET. It has the same pin configuration as the first MOSFET. So we have three source pins and a gate pin on one side and four drain pins on the other. So let's just mark those in. Now we've already established that there is no short along this piece of track right here But what I want to check next is if we have a short on this side. So let's check that now My multimeter in diode mode once again. I place my 
red probe to ground and my black probe to the source pins of the second MOSFET and I get a reading of 0 0.000. So it looks like we have a short after the second MOSFET. So what do we do when we have a short? Well, as you've seen from my other videos, when we have a short, we inject voltage to try and flush out the shorted component. Now, I could inject voltage directly in at this position here. However, there are a lot of small components right beside each other. So my worry would be that if I injected with a probe or a wire, that it would touch off something that I didn't mean for it to touch off and cause more harm. But I do know that most of these laptops have a similar configuration. If your DC input, a first MOSFET, a second MOSFET, and then we should have a current sense resistor somewhere else on the board. And that will make for a much better position to inject the voltage. I looked around the board and I found this current sense resistor right here. And with the power turned off, I did a continuity check and this is connected to the source pins of that second MOSFET. So this will make a much nicer place to inject voltage. So let me show you how I set that up. To inject voltage, I introduce my DC power supply. I connect my black wire to ground. I connect my red wire to the current sense resistor. And we're gonna start off the voltage in the current board very low. So I'm gonna start with a voltage of one volt and I'm going to start with a current of 0 0.1 amps or 100 milliamps and I'm going to bring it up in 100 milliamp increments. And this image shows how I actually connected up the wires from my DC power supply to my motherboard. As you can see, I prefer to solder them in position. It's safer and it leaves your two hands free to touch around the board to try and work out which components are heating up as you increase the current. Now, I started off with one volt and a current limit of 100 milliamps, but obviously I couldn't feel anything warming up with that low amount of current. So I increased it in steps of 100 milliamps the whole way up to the maximum of five amps. And even with five amps going through the shorter component, on the ground, I could not feel anything warming up on this motherboard. Now, I purchased a cheap and cheerful thermal camera, it's the cheapest one on the market, for 120 euros second hand, and I decided that this would be a good opportunity to see if it could spot anything warming up where I'm unable to do it by touch. So with my thermal camera in hand, I decided to have another look. And as you can see, straight away the section around where the wires are connected to the board seems to be getting warm. None of the other sections are getting warm. Not the chipset, not around any of the other components, only the section around where the jumper wires are connected to the board. This area around here is the area that is showing as being marginally warmer than the rest of the board when I inject 5 amps. So I thought it might be a good idea just to get a closer look at the components here with my microscope front and back and you can watch it with me as I examine each of these capacitors one by one can you see which one is causing the problem Hopefully you could see that it was the first of those larger capacitors that seems to be cracked. So I got my hot air station, heated it up and removed that cap from the board. And with that capacitor removed from the board, we just need to check if it's short and it certainly is. With that shorted capacitor now removed, I disconnected my power supply and checked in diode mode once again to see if the short on our main power rail has gone. So I press my red probe to ground and press my black probe to the current sense resistor and I'm now measuring 0 0.472. We had previously been measuring 0 0.000 but having removed that shorted capacitor we're now getting a measurement of 0 0.472 which seems closer to what it should be. Now there's quite a bit of effort involved in putting this motherboard back into the laptop with all the different connections and cables and that. So what I decided to do was carry out one more check just to give me another tell as to whether this is likely to boot or not. I wanted to check and make sure that our main power rail is back fully functional now that I've removed that short. So I plugged in my power adapter 
I introduce my multimeter this time in volts DC range. I place my black probe to ground, my red probe to that same current sense resistor, but again, this time we're measuring voltage. And with my power cable plugged in, I'm measuring 19.5 volts at the current sense resistor. So this is correct. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the motherboard now, I'm gonna put it back into the laptop, connect back in all the cables and see if I can get it to boot. I've put the board back into the chassis and connected back in all the cables and I've plugged in my power adapter over here as you can see. So let's see what happens. Power, okay, so we got backlight on the keyboard. Do we have screen? We have backlight on the screen and we have the HP logo. I was concerned that maybe there would be an issue with the screen, maybe cracked or just not working. But as you can see, it is absolutely perfect. Um, I need to provide a hard drive, as you could see from the sticker at the start, the no hard drive came with this. The only downside is there's actually no battery in it either. Um, that wasn't written on it when it was sold. I thought there was a battery with it, but given that it's a five-year-old laptop, would the battery have been any good anyway? I don't know. So I might get a battery for this. Uh, it's stamped as being from 2019, um, and this looks like it's fully working now. And that completes my video for this week. It's very interesting to see the difference a terminal camera can make. I was reluctant to buy one because doing the repairs here, I understand that most people aren't going to have one. But I think the simple fact is, if I didn't have a terminal camera today, I wouldn't have fixed this laptop. Because even with five amps going through the shorted component, I could not detect by touch which component was warming up. I hope you all enjoyed the video this week guys, please like and subscribe and I'll be back with another one of these HP laptops next week.